the three things I supplement my nutrition with are omega-3 fatty acid capsules. This is actually not the original container. I get them at the drugstore. Even though drugstore, every time I use the word, sounds a little bit suspicious. It is the right word. And so this is one capsule. And I try to take a capsule with every single meal I eat. That's sometimes one meal a day. That sometimes is two, sometimes three. Four is very rarely. I usually try to do intermittent fasting and therefore I eat, I do one with every single one because this actually allows me to start a fast with the proper nutrients in me at any single point of the day, which is kind of a flexibility advantage, I guess. The next thing I supplement with is these vitamin tablets. And these vitamin tablets are actually also, this is actually the original container. Actually, both of these are the original containers. So this is basically the vitamin tablet container at a drugstore, a German drugstore called Müller Markt. And this is uh, at drug market. So it's basically just called um, Drogerie Markt, which is German for drugstore. So these are the brands they also have. So the first one is Bivolis by DM and the second one or DM and the second one is Fit and Vital or Fit und Vital. So these are both obviously German products and you also cannot really order them online, I guess. Nevertheless, there are, there is something else I usually take, which is an ever, <laughs> I actually looked up the word before because I didn't know it, an ever bescent tablet. Let's just play it again because I cannot pronounce it properly. Effervescent tablet. Effervescent tablet. So it's an effervescent tablet. And now what is the purpose of this effervescent tablet? If we actually take a look at how many vitamins of, or how much to which percentage a capsule of these vitamin tablets actually is enough for you on a daily basis. Then we see that vitamin A, for example, within uh, both of these, these are basically both the same product, even though they are sold at a different drugstore with a different branding. Vitamin A, for example, is like 100% of the daily dose you actually should get. But then other things, maybe because they are also in foods, which is kind of the thing, I guess, because why would you make a product like this and just not put any thinking behind this? Therefore, I think the things that are like 100% in there are actually the things you don't really on a normal diet get out of the diet. And therefore the things like vitamin C are things you also get in vegetables and in fruits. Therefore, there's just not as much in there because sometimes it's also harmful to just ingest too much of things like these, things like vitamins and minerals. Because in the right dose, they obviously optimize your health. But in the wrong dose, whether it's too low or too much, this can be actually quite harmful because sometimes they even work as a as a toxin, I guess. Toxin is the right word. It's quite funny because in German, my native language, it's called gift. But gift in English obviously means present. So, funny. So now, the third one is now the Effer, Efferfersen tablet. And what is the purpose of this one? I really, in order to simplify, uh, in order to simplify the approach and also make it travel ready, it would make sense to only take capsules and not something that has to be solved in water. Why do I still have it in there? Because it just adds another layer of, of security, I guess. So if the makers of these products actually didn't put in too much thought and this actually doesn't basically satisfy the needs for the different nutrients one person has at a given day, then I still have the thoughts of these other people who created this other product. I mean, this is not the most useful, rational ever. Nevertheless, the thing is also that I I know that 
it is basically not all the things I need. Nevertheless, this also means that I can take multiple things like these at a given meal and then still fast in the evening, for example, without losing the ability to, if I then also have dinner, to also add another one. But this is not one of the the most important thing I had or the most important thought I had when I decided to go for these specific products is this availability basically and also them being cheap because I try to cut out all the things out of my life which are not useful and if I take things like these and I it doesn't really make sense to take them for like two weeks of course if it's an experimentational period where you want to find out if you actually feel better which chances are if the effect is not very huge you won't ever realize because there are just so many other factors like just assume you ran like two two you did two runs more in the last two weeks and then just by the increase of exposure to light by the increase of exposure to fresh air you just might feel better because you also sleep better because you are there are just so many things you cannot control and therefore there are no you cannot really if you don't track down all these different variables you actually cannot really make sure if this optimizes your brain performance for example so now let's actually again talk about why i took these cheap products and not something out of the internet i tried to find something better there are products like athletic greens for example and apart from the fact that many of uh, the podcasts i listen to currently sponsor are sponsored by athletic greens i just looked it up obviously because that's what ads do they just make you randomly do things i looked it up and it's like 100 bucks a month let's compare the cost of the supplementation to something like these vitamin tablets they are one to two bucks per container or per bottle this actually means that i can buy as many of these as i possi can possibly want if instead for example i order something from amazon which is already 30 bucks and then it turns out it's not something i want to have because it just doesn't taste very well or the taste obviously is something that is <laughs> not very important when it comes to these matters nevertheless there just might be a factor that actually makes this not a plausible approach in the long term therefore i just went for the cheapest product this now means it's not a financial constraint because at any given point in time if i can also buy like random amount of food i can just buy these things and these are basically not very expensive therefore i can buy as many of them as i possibly want and the risk of me actually being then cost cutting again or just cutting costs again and cutting out things like these because i haven't seen any effect and therefore I prevent myself from actually cutting these. This meant from the moment on I decided to take these things, I took them. Sometimes I forget them, maybe a few times a year, but nevertheless from the point in time at which I decided to take these things, I took them and now I basically am on these supplements. I mean, these are not really supplements in the sense of supplements. Nevertheless, these are vitamin supplements and also omega-3 fatty acid. It's also a supplement. It's not like a supplement like caffeine or a certain drug or something but it's a supplement that supplements your food intake and makes it more nutritious you could say so now the first thing being reducing the risk of me quitting taking these things the second thing is because they are so simple and because they are in these small containers they're also very travel friendly and also the fact that I just made it very easy so I simplified all of these decisions at how much I should take by just so example if you had something you needed to take once a day basically these things but when it comes to omega-3 fatty acids there are benefits in just taking more the actual maximum amount or the optimum amount you should take depends or varies on the study there are different studies that basically state that if you increase omega-3 fatty acids in your diet or just to supplement them in your diet if you didn't do before they just might be as effective for example at treating depression and other mental disorders like proper drugs and this is just mind-blowing if you think about it nevertheless almost nobody knows about it which 
sounded pretty much clickbait. I just talked clickbait. Nevertheless, it was just in my mind. So now, the thing I wanted to state about how I simplified my intake of these of these supplements is this: because I also do intermittent fasting, and because I often or sometimes cannot really control when I eat. This means sometimes you just go for a dinner or not you go for a dinner, but you actually go out for a dinner. Then it's very nice because I usually eat dinner. Sometimes I also eat lunch late in the afternoon. Sometimes I also eat breakfast. But what happens then if you take these things once a day and you take these things, so you take a breakfast, you eat a breakfast, and then you need also to take these things. Of course, you could take them with your breakfast, but it's not something that's very optimal when it comes to actually remembering these things. When it comes to establishing the habit of actually taking these things, then the thing that makes the most sense is to create triggers or to create an environment that actually triggers the intake of these things. So in order to do something like this, it makes sense to treat these different intake scenarios or try to make them as similar as possible this means you take them at the same time for example every single day if you do things like these and then you try to fast for dinner then you have the problem that you didn't take the nutrients and then if you're already in the fasted state and you ate breakfast at eight in the morning this creates the problem that if you now take these things they break a fast because they have a few calories and also i mean because it's fat and because it's oil it's fish oil they come in these capsules and these capsules actually are a little bit of carb and this means now they break the fast they also add oil but they break the fast and now here's another thing when you go into a fast what actually happens kind of is that your body needs to regulate all the things in your body all the nutrients the nutrient availability minerals micronutrients macronutrients needs to regulate these things without having the external source of food being digested in your digestive tract and therefore delivering all the nutrients to your bloodstream constantly. This means your body actually is on its own when it comes to regulating these things. When the body then is in a fasted state and you then randomly take these nutrients because you forgot to take them in the breakfast because you didn't plan to fast but you just did and this creates the problem that if you now take these things combined with the ever versus and tablet Let's just look it up again because I'm too dumb to remember. Effervescent tablet. Effervescent tablet. What I realized, for example, as an example for this effect I'm currently describing, when I took the effervescent tablet in the morning, I got headaches whenever I fasted till the evening. And this was an effect that it was just almost causal. I guess it was causal. Nevertheless, not nevertheless, but therefore I try to only take these things whenever I ate something. Also with vitamins, some of these vitamins, if you take them in the morning and then you usually fast in the morning, so it makes sense in order for you to do the things. So at any given day, if you the, the earlier you do the things in the day, the more likely it is that you actually do them over the course of the day because you still have time if you didn't take them and therefore the earlier you take them, the more you make sure you actually take things like these. Therefore, for a long period of time, I took all these things in the morning, which created headaches. And sometimes I ate breakfast at this time, at this period in time when I introduced these supplements into my life. I still, I still ate breakfast. And this now means if you usually want to take them at the same time and that's breakfast time and then you take them at the breakfast but you also want to do intermittent fasting therefore you can out the breakfast what this actually results in is that you either skip all of these supplements which is not something that's very useful because when it comes to establishing a habit it makes sense to just use the heuristic or just the unit of time that is the unit of time that is the most approachable which is the day and therefore this is also a principle in terms of in terms of making people actually do things and establishing a habit. Actually, many of of many of the variations of the pill actually don't require a pill every single day. But in order to prevent uh, women from getting pregnant, 
It also, again, makes sense to establish the habit of taking things like these every single day. Therefore, a few of these variations of the pill just have placebos at specific days in order to just establish the habit of taking all of these things every single day because it's easier, because every single day, because the day is basically the thing that is that is the cycle already we are in. Of course, there is also the week, but it, just by nature, because we have to sleep every single day, we have to usually eat every single day, we have to drink a few times every single day, the sun goes up every single day, all of these things basically trim us for everything, optimize, optimize, not really optimize, but it makes sense to then also create habits that are based on the day, because then there are all, all of these triggers, like if I wake up, then I just take these supplements, or if I, whenever I eat, after I'm finished, I just take these supplements. So now what I also wanted to say is that vitamins, uh, a few vitamins are actually fat soluble. This means if you just take the vitamins on an empty stomach, stomach, apart from these things breaking you fast and therefore putting you in a very weird state sometimes, especially with the Everversion tablet, what they also do is they are just not as well absorbed in your body because your body actually absorbs them far better if they are eaten with food, especially when it comes to the things that are fat soluble or solvable that need to, that basically need additional fat for the body to acquire them or to absorb them. Now, all of these free products are products I can get at Müller. So therefore, Müller is one of the biggest drugstores in Germany. Müller and DM are actually the two biggest. If I now go to another country, obviously that's a problem. Nevertheless, I can also buy these things in stock. They don't go bad very, very fast. This means I could buy. And because also they are so cheap, let's actually take a look at how many tablets they are in. In this bottle, this is like one or two euros. I think it's two. I cannot remember. So therefore, if I just made up something, it would be wrong. Now, these are 100 things, 100 tablets. This means with three bottles or three and a half or three and a little bit, you're actually already done for the year. Just think about it. You buy three of these, these are like six euros, maybe eight euros, and then you are done in terms of vitamin supplementation for a year. If you take one every single day, if you take two, then obviously the amount of money and also tablets you need doubles. The same with these things. I mean, you don't know what is in there, but what is in there is, I wanted to say that, I mean, I, <laughs> I exchanged them, I switched them. And therefore, also with the omega-3 fatty acids you want to supplement, you just take one a day and you're good. But in my case, I just take one with every single meal because that's even simpler because every time I eat, I just eat them and therefore they are absorbed far better and I don't have the problem of these disturbing or disrupting my fasting periods and therefore giving me headaches and therefore me not being able to perform very well if I study or if I work. And therefore, I mean, if you actually, some of these things like, there is this thing called, this phenomenon called the keto flow. This means if your body is not very able to regulate all of the minerals, micronutrients and macronutrients so basically the sources of energy and also the smaller things in your body and also the salt in your body. What happens is if you, for for up until now, in your previous life, not in your previous life, but up until now, you haven't been in fasted states or were on a ketogenic diet that simulates a fasted state. Your body actually never had to do all of these things. Therefore, it never really learned them. Burning fat or the ketosis or ketosis as a process, not really as a process, but much more as a state the body is in, actually improves in effectiveness, especially the fat burning improves in effectiveness and becomes quicker and also becomes better accessible if you spend more time fasting or spend more time in ketosis in these states. The more time you spend in these, the better your body actually becomes at these. And because most of us ate like three times a day in the past up until now, Many of us are not as well fat adapted. This is what it's called. And now what I'm saying is that keto flu has basically a higher like likelihood of appearing 
if you are not ex well as well fed adapted this also means if you then additionally to not being well fed adapted take these things in your fasting period they additionally stress your body basically and this means you tend to get more into the keto flow this meant for me that sometimes just because i took this eververson tablet in the morning i basically had headaches like crazy headaches in the evening or in the afternoon if i then ate food usually it went away because of the way salt distribution then was restored and also mineral distribution in the body so with food these things tend to usually get, go away with the keto flu it works even better if you go on carbs probably because of the accessibility of these carbs if you eat carbs then they are just in your bloodstream and then your body switches from burning fat and to having to regulate all of these things to just taking the things taking the nutrients that come out of the digestive tract and the switch probably happens faster if you instead are on the keto diet then you're already in a fasted state and then if you have the keto flu and you try to switch to the to the what is the state called the state of nutrients being available i just don't know right now anabolic state the anabolic state if you then switch to the anabolic state in which nutrients are available and your body actually can build up things like muscles and restore hurt things like muscle fibers then yeah if you are in the analog state then the keto flu tends to go away i don't know where i wanted to go with the standard phone i just mentioned so now why do i take these supplements that's already a long video we have already covered lots of things among them habit creation among them other constraints for the long term like not quitting these things again if you decide to do these things therefore this also optimizes for habit creation it also optimizes for not critiquing these things ever again because if they are very cheap if they obviously have some scientific impact and also if they're already established habit why should you just quit these things randomly and see how your life worsens because of this decision therefore make this decision once go for specific products and then try to stick with these things now a little bit of not really science some of it is science some of it is not science why to take all of these things in my own case i mean there is often the argument that of course you shouldn't really rely on supplements of course you shouldn't because the food should give you all the nutrients that's a truism and if a truism is said it's always true that's the thing about a truism it doesn't make sense to rely on these things yeah because you or you have to eat anyway therefore it would make sense to optimize your nutrition in a way that also optimizes for the optimal amount of macro micro nutrients and lots of minerals therefore by the way the ever version tablet also has minerals in in it whereas these things don't have minerals in it whether it's the these things so ideally you would get a tablet not a ipad but much more a tablet that has minerals and vitamins combined this would be optimal then you would only need two different things but i also take these minerals and they only are in the eververson tablet i also buy so now why do you take these different things as i already said of course it would be nice if everybody had the optimal diet but most people haven't and that's also the reason burger king still exists i mean that's a very short thread and i cut a lot of other things out there but for me for example it's just a security every now and then i i deviate from my optimal diet like very often actually and whenever i deviate i just make sure that i have all the nutrients and because of all of these things are not like 300% of the daily needs this means i just can take them and i don't really have to care about them or have to care about having hitting a dosage that's too high at least i don't have to care about it as much as i would have if i took things that are 100% of daily of daily supplementation for all of these different vitamins and nutrients so now this is regarding the vitamins 
you just make sure you have the vitamins and if you are sufficient in a vitamin over time this just creates things you cannot really control it's not that you cannot really control these but you cannot really foresee the impact of these things over time if you are deficient in vitamin d if you are deficient in vitamin a it could B, for example, if you are deficient in vitamin A because you just eat random things that don't have vitamins in it and you also don't supplement, it could mean that your eyesight over the next 20 years worsens or is less likely to be as good as it was in the beginning compared to a normal diet that actually provides vitamin A and therefore actually is good for the eye because some, of, some part of the visual process actually requires vitamin A. So now... It's basically a layer of security. It's like a seat belt, actually, you could say. A seat belt is, in most cases, you don't need a seat belt. But nevertheless, it makes sense to just fasten the seat belt because there are these scenarios where if you have done a seat belt, it increases your risk of actually living after a car accident dramatically. Of course, most of the cases are not these cases and most of the time you spend in a car is not time spent at a car accident nevertheless it just makes sense to cover these things and that's basically the security you create when adding supplements now that's about the vitamins and the minerals let's actually talk a little bit more about omega-3 fatty acids so first of all there are two different versions you can get it's not called fish oil for no reason and this is also one of the reasons I am not vegan, probably. I mean, you could also make the exception of just taking in fish oils, just like random people in the past invented the exception of fish not being meat. Absolutely ridiculous. Nevertheless, people actually think about it like, oh yeah, but uh, you can eat fish, can you? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm vegetarian. Yeah, but we have fish. <laughs> it's just so nuts if you think about it. Now, back to... Fisher, back to omega-3 Fisher. There are just many different aspects of omega-3 Fisher. One of these is that you, so there are different parts of fatty acids you actually need to get, as well as there are different, different uh, basic amino acids you need to get. So there are these amino acids you cannot produce on your own, and therefore you actually need to get them. These are called essential or necessary. I think they are called essential amino acids. This is called, this is protein. Protein is amino acids. And fatty acids then, acids then are fats. And these fats are, can come in different forms. So basically the, this depends on the molecular structure of these fats. So there are omega-3 fats and there are omega-6 fats. Most of us tend to get too much omega-6 and less or too little omega-3. Therefore, if you now introduce a supplement, you basically change the proportions in a way that are more beneficial to your overall well-being and health. Omega-3 fatty acids, there are also, again, is a distinction between EPA and DPA. And there also is the proportion of these things. So, you can research the, the detailed effects, what I actually would recommend if you want to actually research these effects, I would recommend a podcast. It's also a YouTube channel. It's called Huberman Lab. It's a Stanford professor who actually takes a deep dive into all of these different topics, like what is the impact of light on the circadian rhythm and on how well you perform? When is the cortisol spike in the morning and when should it be? And things like these. So basically optimizing it's basically, you could could say, a biohacking podcast. But biohacking sounds so, so bloggy. So, well, <laughs> yeah. It's basically a very, a very common sense approach to all of these different topics. Nevertheless, researched very well. And also he cites scientific papers all the time or whenever they are needed. It doesn't make sense to cite them all the time because all the time is, a, is an idea, I guess, that cannot be reached. So when it comes to omega-3 fatty acids, they actually improve, you could say, many different things, like I already mentioned, the risk for these uh, emotional, not really emotional states, I don't want to, 
I don't want to put out anything like this, but the risk for mental disorders. It's not the risk for mental disorders. It's just that these things tend to improve with the supplementation of an, a certain absolute amount of EPA and DPA. I'm not quite sure if it, the other thing is also called DPA or if it's DHA or something like this. I actually have to look it up. So don't take this for don't take my word for it when it comes to these things, but just take your own research into account. This is also one of the reasons. If I research some of this stuff, and I don't listen to a podcast daily about the impact of EPA or DPA, or the impact of omega-3 fatty acids, one month in time from when I did the research, I just don't know about it anymore. Of course, I can write things down, but then I actually have to read them to have them, have them accessible in my mind again. This means there have been like 10 periods in my life where I actually researched, oh yeah, this is, and I should probably go for, for like this bottle and uh, go for the one that it's like in the market and this has this proportion and I calculated all the different proportions of all the different omega-3 fatty acid capsules that were available and actually turns out this is the best one because it has the best proportion of these two. But I don't know anymore. I also cannot calculate all the things because I cannot just remember. But I also don't have to because I have set up these things in the past and provided or assumed that I trust myself, that I trust my past self when making these decisions and I just assume I do, then I don't have to go into these decisions ever again because it's already established, it's a habit. I just buy these things for the rest of time and I don't have to think about it anymore and can actually use my brain power and my time for things that I haven't discovered that are new to me or things that I also have to do. Therefore, I don't have to. I also don't have to talk about these things. Nevertheless, I thought it maybe would be useful to talk about these things for you. Probably because I mean also for myself to keep these things stored, but nevertheless, making things like these is, is I guess, to offer these things to somebody else. So now, I guess that's already a wrap. I take these three different supplements and I try to eat as healthy as I can. Eating as healthy as I can currently results in me switching to a kind of a normal diet whenever I switch to a normal diet, whenever I'm like, oh yeah, but I don't want to do it anymore. Which obviously is just a random emotional thought, not, re thought, not really emotional, but yeah, well, it doesn't also really make sense to give in to these things, but also there is the argument, this is not the ultimate counter argument, but it's just that sometimes the body actually knows what it wants and therefore sometimes these cravings for things actually are quite useful because that's basically the body saying, oh yeah, this food actually has the best, the most optimal nutrients for us right now and therefore let's just make the mind crave it and influence our rational mind into buying these things. Nevertheless, this process is not really working when it comes to these foods that are basically processed, not really processed, but they are optimized for selling as much of these foods as possible. And also for addiction, if you are addicted to chocolate or this specific chocolate blend, brand, then chances are the more people are addicted to this, this specific chocolate brand, the more money they make over time and the more stable their source of income. Therefore, what makes sense for these people actually creating these foods is to also include factors like how addicting is this? The same with Facebook and Instagram and things like these. The same with a video like this here. I obviously try to optimize my light and things like this, as I already said, probably not in this video. Nevertheless, so let's actually try to draw a conclusion, a final conclusion. It makes sense to take these supplements and oh yeah, before the final conclusion actually hits you in the face. Let's just go over my normal diet and what I don't consider as supplements. Apart from taking these three different supplements, I try to stay away from any other brain altering thing like caffeine, like alcohol, because all of these things just impact your mental states. And the more time you spend in a not impacted state, the more time you actually have to figure out how to work well in this state, how to sleep well in a state. But 
the more dependencies you have, the more dependencies you have. Let's just assume you are dependent on working on caffeine. And what happens then if you, if it's like 10 minutes before an exam starts and you just don't have access to caffeine because it's Sunday and because you do the exam at home and you don't have access to caffeine and you cannot buy it in the stores. This only works for, for countries in which Sunday means that stores are closed, obviously. But this is just a dependency. Obviously, if World War Three hits us or if a global pandemic hits us or whatever hits us, it's not that you then die if you don't take the vitamins or you die if you don't take caffeine. But what happens if you drink daily caffeine for years and then you don't have access to it anymore or your brand closes its it shop down and you have to switch to a different brand? It's not that these are the best counter arguments. It's just that it's a dependency. And the less dependencies you have, the less dependencies you have, and the more flexible you are, the more freedom you have when it comes to choosing things, I guess. So now, when it comes to the nutrition, I currently stick to, uh, I try to stick to a keto diet. I also try to do as much intermittent fasting or spend as much of my time fasted or in a ketogenic state as possible because this optimizes brain performance. Not really optimizes brain performance, but much more also, I mean, it also optimizes maybe for brain performance. The studies are not really clear, I guess, at this point in time. But what it does, and this is an effect that I experienced again and again and again, is that if you are dependent on carbs, then you eat something rich in carbs, then your satiation, your satiation, satiation also goes up. But what also goes up is different hormones like serotonin, which is actually released whenever you get carbs, also dopamine, but dopamine in general also with foods, but the more processed or the more the more you want those foods, the more dopamine goes up in anticipation of the reward, with the reward being the food. So now, the goal is basically to go as long-term when it comes to mind states as possible and cutting out these short-term highs and lows the mind has. And these highs and lows are, for one, caused by the imbalance or not the imbalance but much more the instability of blood sugar if you eat carbs then your blood sugar tends to go up very quickly then insulin is released and then the carbs are stored in the cells then when too much insulin or just when insulin is released and the blood sugar goes down and this then is the hangry phase usually there is also then the phase where your body switches to fat burning more if the liver glycogen is then not available anymore. That's basically the second state of running on carbs. The first one is using the carbs in the bloodstream released by the digestive tract while digesting the things. The second one is using the liver glycogen, which is a temporary storage for glycogen. And the third one would be to not use glycogen anymore only. I mean, you still use glycogen, but the glycogen now you use is made out of fatty acids that are released by accessing the fat stores by accessing the fat cell cells and these fat cells release fatty acids whenever the kind of counter hormone it's not really a hormone i just don't know what the right what the right phrase for these these things is it's glucagon glucagon is then released and this makes the f the fat cells release fatty acids and then these fatty acids are in your bloodstream and then can be accessed and split into carbs again. Now, if you go on to glycogen on the liver and also go on glycogen in the blood, then you make your state of mind dependent on your blood sugar. I mean, it is dependent on your blood sugar anyway, but the less stable your blood sugar levels are, the less stable your mind tends to be. And this then results in hangry phases. This also could result in potential headaches because your body, and you, not really your body, but you just are less stable. And this means the more stability you have. When it comes to blood sugar, the better it is because your brain runs to... When, if you are on carbs, your brain runs to 100% on glycogen, which is basically the another another way of saying a more complex carb. So that's basically the, the carb that's available in the body, within the body. And your brain 
but your brain can also run on s up to 75% on keto, on ketones, which are released as a byproduct of splitting up these fatty acids, splitting up fat and burning fat. And these also have their advantages, running on ketones, but just running on fat, because you have fat is more energy dense, almost, not almost, but more than double as energy dense as carbs and protein are. This means if you run on fat, you basically have infinite resources, at least compared to the one day or the thousand to three thousand calories of liver glycogen you have stored. Maybe less, maybe a little bit more, depends on how big you are, on the size you actually have, on how tall you are, and many other things. So now, if we compare these two processes, processes, then the one that optimizes for a stable brain state is the ketogenic one, the fasting state and the ketogenic diet, basically burning fat. This also could mean that you are less able to perform long distance cycling, long distance running, because in these specific scenarios, it often works better if you are running on carbs and then you ingest carbs again because they go directly into the blood and can be accessed more easily than you have energy again. Whereas if you also go on fat, I mean, there are also experiments currently ongoing or studies currently ongoing that actually dive into, into these specific scenarios. Sometimes it probably or it seems to be that sometimes it is useful to also instead of ingesting very simple carbs in order to in order for them to be accessible very very fast it would also make sense to also just add fat basically something like nuts or just fat in general or fatty foods while going on a long distance run in order to maybe keep the fat burning better running or something like this so now as a final resolution. I mean, there also are spices. So apart from the ketogenic diet, spices are also really hardcore supplements. For example, curcuma actually seems to have some benefits when it comes to preventing Alzheimer's and many other things. So basically take as much spices as you can possibly eat. That's maybe another advice. Not very, <laughs> take as, as much maybe just think about increasing your intake of spices or varying the spices you actually eat because then the more you have the less likely it is that you miss out on any of these effects also most spices probably aren't poisonous that's the reason they are spices and mm, yeah there has already a selection process been going on resulting in the spices we currently use and that are currently available now that's basically it. If you then optimize your diet for optimal, optimal nutritional supply, then this would also be useful. But of course, this out of these other things are an add-on, and therefore this finalizes, not really finalizes, this concludes the video about the free supplements I take. And that's the end.